So whenever you see a graph like this, it's gonna see little symbols like X dot and Y dot, and you may not be familiar with that. So let's just explore what they mean. So firstly, through all of motion, you'll see a lot of X, X dot, and also X with two dots on it. And firstly, X just means displacement. And you can also think about it as distance. So how far an object has traveled. Now X dot, our next symbol, that means velocity. And you can think of velocity as speed, but the only difference is velocity can have positive and negative, where speed is positive. Now finally, our X with two dots, that's called acceleration. Now you think with X, if that applies, then that's also gonna apply with Y as well. So in the same way, Y is displacement, y dot is velocity, and y with two dots is also acceleration. Okay, so you may ask, so why do we have these symbols instead of writing dx on dt, which we normally do for velocity? Well, the reason is because it's just too much hassle to write that out every time. So we've just developed these symbols in motion to make it easier for ourselves, okay? So always good to know what these symbols mean first so you don't get confused later. We've talked about the symbols. Let's have a look at the initial velocities. We're gonna start off with the horizontal initial velocity. Having a look at this diagram over here, you can see that the velocity here and the angle of projection and with the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity, they make this right angled triangle. Can you see that? And so if they make a right angle triangle, then we can capitalize on that fact and use that to work out what the initial horizontal velocity is. We have an angle here and we know the velocity. So you can imagine that we can use cos theta. So cos theta adjacent on hypotenuse gives you this. And then we just need to multiply the V across and you find out that the initial velocity it's just V times cos theta. So now I've taught you how to work out the horizontal initial velocity. How do you think we're gonna work out the vertical velocity? It's gonna be pretty similar, right? So in the same way, we're also gonna use the projectile angle and also the initial velocity there. Here, we wanna find out this vertical. And instead of using cos theta, we're gonna use sine theta, purely for the fact that when we use sine theta, we get opposite on hypotenuse, so y dot on v, and when we multiply the v across, we get a very simple equation here, which is that the vertical initial velocity equals to v sine theta. So now we've just worked out these two equations. Okay, so I don't want you to worry that you'll have to go through this whole process every time. You'll just learn to memorize these equations. So these ones, x dot equals v cos theta and y dot equals to v sine theta, equations that I want you to memorize. The other thing that I want you to make sure you know is that this is just for working out the initial velocities, okay? So it's just to work out the velocity right at the very start. It doesn't actually tell you velocity for the whole time. As you can imagine, that's gonna change. So just remember, working out the very initial velocity not the equation for the velocity over the whole time. All right, let's go through some questions together now. In question one, we wanna find the initial velocities, the horizontal and the vertical, and we've been told that the velocity is 100 and the angle is 30 degrees. So we've just got little reminders for you there, feeling very nice today. So horizontal velocity was this one, V cos theta. So all you need to do is just substitute it in. So velocity was 100 and the angle was 30 degrees. And this becomes cos 30 square root three on two. And this becomes 50 square root three meters per second for the velocity. And remember initial horizontal velocity, okay? This is only the velocity at the very, very start. Now let's work on the vertical velocity. For that one, we're gonna use this equation over here, which is V sine theta. So now we have 100 times sine 30 degrees. And sine 30 is just half, 
And so you get 50 meters per second of the initial vertical velocity. So pretty easy with that. So this is your stock standard for your initial velocities. Now let's have a look at question two here, which is slightly different. What you can notice with this one is that the triangle is pointing downwards. Yeah, so it should kind of make you note that while the horizontal velocity is still going the positive direction, the vertical velocity is going in the negative direction. Can you see that? Okay, so let's start off with horizontal velocity. So we're going to say that velocity in this case equals to 100 as well. The horizontal velocity is going to be 100 times cos negative 30 degrees. So this is where students commonly get confused. Usually we have the triangle up there, so it's going to be positive 30 degrees. But in this case, taking that as a zero line, it's going down that way. So that's why we say it's negative 30 degrees. And we have to make sure that's what we sub substitute in here. Now, we know that cos of negative 30 degrees is the same as cos 30 degrees. So that still becomes square root 3 on 2, which still gives you 50 square root 3 metres per second. But when it comes to the vertical velocity here, where we have 100 times sine of negative 30 degrees, sine of negative 30 degrees changes. Yeah, it's actually going to be negative. So that becomes negative half. So the velocity for the initial vertical velocity is actually negative 50 meters per second, okay? And remember how I said velocity was different from speed because it could be positive or negative. So when it's negative, just going away from the initial point. So just keep that in mind. I know that sometimes you see 30 degrees and just automatically think it's positive, but just have a look at what direction it's in to see whether it's gonna be positive or negative. And for question three here, we want to find the initial velocity and the angle of inclination. So in this one, we have been told about the horizontal velocity as well as the vertical velocity. But what we don't know is the angle of inclination, so the angle that's going up, as well as the initial velocity there. So you might think we're going to use the equations for the initial velocity, but I just want you to think back to very, very basics. If you're just going to, if this was just a right angle triangle there, without telling you it has anything to do with projectile motion, how would you work out V? Yeah, exactly. You just use Pythagoras, right? So that's exactly what you do. You just use Pythagoras for this. So you take the square root of 8 squared and 6 squared, which gives you square root of 100, and that gives you 10 meters per second for this velocity there. Now, just not considering that it's motion at all, how would you work out that theta if it was just a right angle triangle? That's right, you just use tan, because that's the easiest, because we have the opposite and the adjacent. So we just write that tan theta is going to equal to eight on six, same as four on three, and that, gives you approximately 53 degrees. So we've just worked out by using Pythagoras for the initial velocity and tan theta for the angle of inclination, what those are. So with all these motion questions, sometimes it's easy to think back to your principles of what should be done rather than thinking about equations. Because it could be easy to think, oh, I'm working with initial velocity, need to use a V cos theta. But just having a look at this triangle, we know it's Pythagoras for that and tan theta for that.